Hello, my name is Emily. I'm an artist and jewellery maker. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is quite possibly my most favourite video to film every year and it seems to be well received by you lot as well. So without further ado, it is my 2023 favourite art supplies. I'd like to mention that there is no clay items in this video because I haven't really changed a lot of my clay supplies. I tend to still use a lot of the same things. Femo clay is my go-to. I use a lot of Be Bright and Blissful cutters so there isn't much more to report, but art supplies, paint, pencils, and all that jazz has been very much enjoyed, so I will show you those now. So in terms of materials, I'm gonna start with the wetter mediums, just so I've got my water, paintbrushes, and all that sorted. I've just recovered from another case of glandular fever, and now I'm full of cold, but swatching art supplies, and art supplies in general, will cheer me up, so apologies for my congested voice, but enjoy the art supplies. I'm going to discuss the paper that I'll be swatching on. So I've got the Cass Art watercolour paper. This is my favourite paper to use. I have hot pressed and cold pressed. I normally cut them into the sizes that I want. So I tend to get the A3 because it's a bit more value for money and I can choose the hot pressed and cold pressed. I tend to cut them down, like I said, into squares or pieces for the artworks that I want. And I just find them really enjoyable to use. Normally when it comes to watercolor paper, you tend to be spending quite a bit on just 12 sheets. Whereas these come in almost jumbo packs, which are 50 sheets. And while it's a little bit more in terms of the one-off purchase, they last a very long time. I've only bought two packs of the 50 sheets this year so it's the a3 and i have hot pressed and cold pressed and i'm not even halfway finished and i've been doing a lot of painting i've recently been doing some artist inspired jars which is a series i'm hoping to do more of but i have currently two done and these are the claude monet and the vincent van gogh these were both done on cold pressed and as you can see the textures are absolutely beautiful they layer really really nicely but also i find that it does really capture the texture of each material but also the paper they work really well together in that sense so i can't wait to do more of these with this paper so would really recommend for an inexpensive paper when you're doing lots and lots of artwork i adore this paper for standard paper to experiment with and enjoy and do original paintings but more of an experimental style this tends to suit all mediums i haven't come across a medium that this doesn't suit 300 gsm a nice weight to it cold press has a nice grain to it while the hot press is a lot smoother but still with a little bit of a uh, a grit to it so it does really nicely adhere to any material but you know it's not quite as smooth as say bristol but for watercolor paper it is very smooth and i really enjoy it I'm going to start with the watercolours. So these are the two that I'm going to be swatching first. These are Roman Schmall watercolours. And these have been my most used, almost neutral colours. They're full pans, so you get a lot for your money. And they are relatively inexpensive as well. The first shade that I'll be swatching is the Aquarius Green. I believe it's like the chromium oxide type green. Nice depth to it, a gorgeous granulation. So I will show you that now. The next Roman Schmall shade I'll be swatching is Sherbush Grey, beautiful shade, very similar to the Shadow Violet in terms of granulation and the colours of the granulation, but almost has a bit more neutral tint. The next shades I'm going to be discussing are all from Old Holland, and these are colours that I'm often using as colours. They're a lot brighter, less of a neutral tone, but these are the ones I tend to reach for the most. So I will swatch these now and tell you about the shades. So the old Holland paints are a lot more gouache They have a nice creaminess to them and they're very opaque. They can be blended in terms of like a transparency to them but they're definitely used more for like a, a punch of colour which I really enjoy using them especially in like floral pieces, botanical pieces or anything there where I want a really intense pigment that can also be blended into each other really nicely. Uh, these are absolutely gorgeous for that. There's a lot of almost viscosity to them which I really really like. The colours that I've chosen here that I tend to use the most are Shiven Engine Yellow Deep which is like almost a deep cadmium yellow but there's just this warm golden hue to it it's beautiful 
and then the brilliant pink is probably my most used color i could definitely do with a new one because mine has definitely got a massive dip in it but it is the most perfect pink it's not too warm not too cool it can be added to other colors to make things more of a neutral undertone it can also be added to things like a carmine it's, there's a lot of versatility with this shade and then king's blue light i love mixing with brilliant pink because it makes a beautiful almost lavender tone but this one i also enjoy using for undertones so that coolness to it or the saturated color within then i can go over that with a, a deeper sort of grayer tones and it makes the piece a lot more muted but as it has that brighter base it does give something a little bit more special like it has something of a vibrancy to it without it being in your face saturated color the next shades are all from a, from different brands, so I'm going to swatch all these, tell you what the brands are, and show you how they look. So the first shade is from Sennelier and it's warm grey. This acts quite similar to a buff titanium shade because it has that creaminess to it. But again, it's a greyer tone, so I find it a little bit more neutral. Buff titanium is great for portraits, where I find that this warm grey also works really great for a cloudier sky, especially when mixed with King's Blue Light, like I mentioned before. The Schmincker Super Granulating Shy Yellow is the next shade. This is very unique to my collection. It's got that green gold, but then it granulates to almost like a lilac. You can see in the pan here, it's got that lilac granulation undertone there's something in there that's just really really special the next shade is may merry blue raw umber raw umber can be quite a cooler brown but with this being having a tint more warmth to it i find it gives it that neutral element so it can be used for a lot more this one is also quite transparent i do have to build it up quite a lot to get um, a pigment but in a way that makes it more versatile because it's great to layer over to, over with things but also with opaque watercolors and gouaches and whatnot but a perfect mid-tone brown that i find i use an awful lot the next products I'm going to discuss are my Darla Rowney FW acrylic inks. I use these a lot because I love the the fluidity of these because they are an ink and they are fluid. But I think the way that they move within the water is absolutely beautiful. It gives it that organic feel to it without it feeling like it's too placed perfectly. I love that about it. And the fact that they are acrylic means they don't activate once they are dry. So great for layering wet media, like gouache and stuff over the top. I especially love this peach pink for like a base if I'm doing a skin tone first and then going over the top of that with darker colours uh and or more vibrant colors but this gives a really nice undertone for a skin tone but knowing that i can actually go over that with wetter mediums as well means it's not going to disrupt i love that and then the Payne's gray is a lot bluer kind of slightly more indigo than like, like a true Payne's gray but this gives depth without being black i can use black over the top of this and gives a bit more of a different value but it does give that depth i love this for midnight scenes so i'll swatch these now and show you what i mean i like to wet the paper first because it's hypnotizing watching the inks move so fluidly throughout the paper but it also gives it that sort of burst it makes it feel more like there's movement and rhythm within the painting which i think is lovely to capture they do require a little bit of shaking and then i just drop a couple of drops in the water that i've added and you'll see what i mean it's beautiful I could watch that all day. It's like ASMR for your eyes. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Oh, I'll show you what they look like blended out as well. When you do start allowing the movement to go throughout a painting as well. You can see the colours are really, they, they do have, not as, I would say granulation, but they do have undertones that disperse within the main pigment as well, which I think is just exquisite. They do have a really nice saturation. You can build it up, but also really easily water them down. I'll show you that now. And it's just absolutely gorgeous.
And then the panes wheel, like I said, has got this inky depth to it, which is beautiful. I'll show you what I mean by that. But then again, really easy to disperse as well. And the disperse is also, um, doesn't reactivate as well, which I love because it gives it that versatility again of what you can layer over the top, which as a mixed media artist, I don't want to be stopped from layering things because of the potential to ruin it. And I have done that many a time. I don't want to ruin my paintings. So the fact that I know that this won't or has less potential to disrupt anything or my plans, I, I really like this and I do really rate these inks. They are a delight to use. The next paints I'm going to show you are acrylic paints and then we're going to go into gouache but I only have two acrylic paints that I feel like I use the most of and funnily enough they're very similar to the inks that I've just swatched. So we have the Winsor Newton Galleria. Payne's Grey you can see has been very well loved. I've got a thing for Payne's Grey, what can I say? But the other shade that I have is relatively new but I have used it a lot and I find that I reach for this quite frequently when I don't know what to use as a base especially if I'm doing something of a neutral like a landscape or something along those lines or a background I find this is great because it adds texture it adds that sort of grain that an acrylic paint would give but then you can layer a lot over the top because again acrylic doesn't be wet but that, that thickness I love the texture of the Galleria acrylic it's viscous enough to provide a a thick layer but you can blend it out it's very creamy and some of them have a bit more of a opacity to them others are a little bit more um transparent but i adore these acrylic paints they aren't as shiny as say ones similar to the system three by dollarani or even the arteza ones the arteza ones do have a lovely shine but i find they're a little bit more expensive for what you get and these are beautiful as they are these are the 60 mil tubes. They tend to have a lot more of uh, ease of application. I do have a couple of the 250 mil ones, but with my hands, I tend to struggle with opening those because it's like a lid that I have to really push off, which I struggle. Whereas these, I can tend to, if I have them loose enough when I close them, I can open them a bit easier. My dexterity isn't the best when it comes to opening things, especially <laughs> with my uh, disabilities but I do have a jar opener that I tend to use it's got a little one for like wine bottles and stuff which also fits these lids very nicely you can see it has a a neutral element to it a bit more warm than say the warm grey like I mentioned from Sennelier but I just love the texture of these paints you can really be a bit slapdash with them which I love because I like the messy side of things but then if you did want to blend I tend to use a buffing brush um in fact I'll show you that in a moment there's some brushes I've really enjoyed using with acrylic paints and I feel like I've adapted my skill within the acrylic paints because of these brushes so I'll show you that now these are just normal swatching brushes but I did want to mention a couple of brushes I've been loving from uh Royal and Langnickel these are the there's two soft grips which oh sorry three soft grips which I'll show you now. We have the soft grip, which is almost like a, a buffer, which I'll show you what I mean in a moment. And then there's a smaller one, which I tend to use for portraits. This one's great for backgrounds and you can use it similar with a mop brush, but I find I do prefer this with acrylic paints because it has a bit more of a coarser hair. Uh, I do like a mop brush to be a bit softer when I'm doing uh, watercolor mopping and this one's a deer foot uh, which again that angled shape is really useful for really getting into a finer like a corner for example if I was doing a portrait and there's uh, a corner that I want to get into uh, this is great for that because I can blend out and into that and really push that into there um, it's great for um, stippling as well because it has almost not quite a duo fibre but there's different hairs within that, some slightly coarser, some a bit softer. It's not too dense, but not too flat, but I really like that. So I'll show you what I mean by the buffing now. I like to almost tip, pick a little bit of that off and then just circular motions. And it really gives like a really soft blend, which I am quite happy I've discovered 
a technique that works for me in terms of blending acrylics. A sip of coffee because my throat is very sore. Right, I was swatching the acrylic paints and got distracted. I have the attention span of a fly, don't mind me. But I'll show you the Payne's Grey now. Again, quite inky. And I love using this. I did a moon painting not too long ago, which I absolutely love doing, like a floral moon. And this was great for a background to provide that midnight glow. And then I use that buffing technique to give that glow of the moon within that. And they layered so beautifully together. Like I said, these Galleria paints are lovely. And for an inexpensive option, they perform just as well as the ones that are less inexpensive, in my opinion. I love them. The other two brushes I wanted to mention that weren't necessarily for acrylic but are for watercolour are these, again, Royal and Langnickel, but they're the Aqualon brushes. I actually found these in, I believe it was either Home Sense or TK Maxx. They're quite expensive for a set. I think they're around £17 for a set of four or five on Amazon. I think they're accidentally wrongly priced, but I still got them for a bargain. They're around £3.99 for that set. So I could not pass up the opportunity and I kind of regret not picking up the other pack of these, but I thought I'll just try the one and I love them so much. I went back and they weren't available again because someone else saw that bargain and made the most of it. But again, beautiful brushes. They have a really nice precise point. They seem to hold enough water so you don't need to keep dipping back into the water, but not too much where it becomes a bit too messy. It's just that perfect hybrid. Um, I really love these. So next we have the Turner Acryl Gouache. You can see a sneak peek of the colours here. But I'll go through what the shades are. I'll swatch them and tell you why I like them. So the first shade is Red Ochre, and this is, I believe, only available in the 40ml tube, but I bought this because it is a colour that I've been searching for for a while, and I know I can mix it, but having that convenience was something I did particularly want because this colour I couldn't quite get the mix between it being warm enough to be a red with a little bit element of pink and it just never seemed to have that consistency with this colour so to see it in a convenient tube was why I bought it and I have used it a lot. I used it in a Pan's Labyrinth portrait in fact I can see it here I'll show you. I used this for here you see all these colours the darker reds was where I used the red ochre and it worked absolutely beautifully and even on the Pantone postcards which are notorious for not being the best to work upon but it worked out quite well so I I think that was this was the painting that made me fall in love with the consistency of Turner acryl gouaches especially the Japanesque as well which I'll show you in a bit because there's that green to it as well which is absolutely gorgeous and that is the shade as well that is a favourite. Now I adore this colour, it's Opera Red by Turner, but it is very easy to separate. I don't know whether it's because it's fluorescent or whether I just got a bad one, but it is quite difficult to use and even getting out the tube is quite tricky because you get a lot of like gel-like consistency, which I haven't had with any of the others, but the colour is wonderful it's almost like an opera pink but then like it says opera red it has got almost like a fluorescence that's just not quite blue to be a pink it's slightly more of like a, a warmer pink red and I love that about it and it's beautiful to add a really pop of vivid vibrance to a painting uh, especially if it's a flower I like adding this as a undertone and then layering a load of like peaches and milkier tones over the top it's a really nice juxtaposition between fluorescence and pastel I love that I did just mention the Japanesque variety of the Turner acryl gouache these are slightly grainier in texture so when you are using these they still work exactly the same they are acrylic so they don't re-wet they are opaque and matte but this is the Japanesque ivory yellow it's almost a Jean Brilliant, I think. In in terms of like the, the colour it gives me is very Jean Brilliant, which I really like. It's one of my favourite sort of colours. Like I said, this is slightly grainier, so it does provide a bit more interest in terms of texture, and I really like mixing it. It works well with the other colours. It's quite versatile, but just the way it dries, 
is quite unique. And that was also in that Pan's Labyrinth portrait that I will, that I just showed you. I'll show you how this looks. The next shades are pretty much my favourite sort of colours in paints and the ones I tend to be unable to resist. So the first shade is Dandelion, which is a mustard, but like a really dirty mustard. It is beautiful. It has like a bit of a chartreuse undertone with sort of a golden hue, but definitely more of a greeny mustard. It's a colour that always captivates me. We then have greyish brown, which I tend to use a lot for mixing, but it is brilliant as well for a cooler contour within like a portrait. Again, very good to buff, like I did with the acrylic paints that I've shown you earlier. It, they have quite a lot of these greyish tones in the Turner range, which I find very useful for mixing and making things a little bit more muted with the vibrant tones that I already have as well. Uh, that versatility of them, I think they're a really good investment because you can use them in so many different ways on their own with brighter colours. They're just brilliant. If I had to choose a green paint that I love the most, this would definitely, if not be the favourite, it is a very solid contender. Similar to the Dandelion, it has that earthiness to it, but it's slightly warmer, murky gives me the sort of foresty vibes but like just before the green leaves turn in the autumn not quite going to be a warm orange or even a yellow yet but just as the seasons are about to change that's what this colour gives me and this ivy green is similar in a way to that opera red in that sort of transparency gel like consistency it's not one of my favourite consistencies of the Turner paints. I definitely say the Turner paints have more inconsistency in the formulas. It's very it's very easy to separate and I have to throw quite a lot of it away when trying to get it out the tube, so quite wasteful. But when I do use this paint it gives me the heart eyes. I just love it. And the next gouaches are possibly my favourite formula of gouache that I've ever used. They are definitely worth the hype. I do enjoy the Turner Acryl Gouache in a very different way. Again, certain colours are very unique to the line, but in terms of the formulation, consistency and the reliability, the Holbein Gouaches are my favourite for that reason. I do have the whites that I use the most frequently. As you can see, they are very well loved. The titanium white is very good for a really opaque, saturated white for highlights. I love adding sparkles or imitation sparkles in my artwork and this is the one that I use. In terms of making a colour more pastel, the Chinese white is excellent for mixing, which I also love. And you can see I've used quite a lot. I also won't swatch these because they are white and on the paper it will not show and I'm not wasting. But in terms of colours, I will show you the ones that I've got currently. These are my personal favourites, so I will show you these swatched and discuss why I like them. I think if I had to describe my favourite pink, it would be this Holbein pink. It's the Cosmos pink, so it's slightly deeper than, say, a brilliant pink, and it's slightly cooler in undertone, but I like the fact that it's deep enough that you can add a bit of a, a Jean Brillin, which I'll show a little bit later, to it to make it a bit more peachy. You can add a bit of the Chinese white to make it more pastel but I just love the creaminess and the depth it's just a very versatile pink I think if I had to have only one pink gouache this would be the one because of how much I can do with it now the next tones might surprise you because they're very muted and I do love a bright gouache but these are fantastic for portraits they are great for undertones they're great for adding a highlight that you don't want to have for white or to cool down or murky up a colour. So the first one is Misty Blue, which I like using for really pale undertones to give them that sort of veiny appearance. Um, I am quite pale myself, so when I do portraits of a similar complexion to me, I know that I tend to have quite a lot of blueness under my eyes, for example, and this colour is perfect to add to that, to this misty green that I'm swatching here as well. It's very good for like a zombie sort of skin. Um, I like this for making things a bit murky or dead looking. It's quite a sickly colour, which I quite like. And I'm a big horror fan, so if I'm doing anything of a horror 
type variety. This is excellent for that reason. The first shade we have here is Jean Brilliant. It's one of my favourite sort of colours to use if I don't really know what colour to do, but I want to add a bit of vibrancy or warmth, but not to a point where it's fluorescent. This seems to be neutral enough to not compete with anything, but still something a bit more special to add a bit of vibrancy. And this tone within the Holbein range is just the most perfect Jean Brilliant I have ever used. I love it. We then have Horizon Blue which is, again, probably my favourite shade of blue. Not too turquoise or aqua. It's like a true pastel cyan. It's like the perfect sky blue. If, if the sky was this colour in the summer, I would say it's a perfect blue sky. And then we have lilac, which, again, they've done this shade so perfectly. When people say lilac, this is the colour that I see. Is it lavender? No, I think lavender is definitely bluer. And I think if these two were mixed then that would be lavender. I think lilac has to be a little bit warmer. There's in the Turner variety the lilac is a lot warmer almost like a mix between lilac and cosmos pink here but I think again I prefer this Holbein one because it has that truer when it's it's almost like the visual representation of when someone says the colour. See this it could be entirely personal preference but I adore this colour. Well that makes me sad because it's done exactly what these ones do where they kind of mix and separate. And this is one of my favorite colors. Let's see if we can try and rescue it. Okay, we might be somewhat safer now. Right, there was a moment of panic, but Smolt Blue has been saved. This is almost like if Ultramarine became pastel, this would be this color. It's somewhat violety. I do prefer this to Ultramarine because I can add indigo to make it deeper. It has that cohesion, whereas Ultramarine can be just a bit too intense for the vibes I like to go for. I like to go for more of these milkier tones. We then have If Spearmint Was a Colour, this would be it. It's very similar to Horizon Blue in value, but I do enjoy this for almost like accentuating a highlight, making things look a bit more dimensional without using just white, especially if I'm doing things with reflection like a jar that I've been recently doing with those artist jars. This works really well for that. And finally, somewhat of a boring colour, but a colour I do use quite a lot of if I want to add depth to a landscape without using black or not having something that's too grey this works really well i feel like this color definitely works well if you are interpreting things like earth soil which i really like the first products i'm going to use of the dry mediums are those of like a crayon variety so we have some neo colors and a couple of the woodies from stabilo so i'll show you those now so first of all we have the stabilo woodies which i i mean i knew this color i would love because it's the most perfect turquoise of this consistency but I was not expecting to love this metallic one as much as I like. It's a perfect way of adding like a point of interest to a painting but I will swatch these now. I do always feel like my inner child is very much satisfied when using these. I thought I'd also mention that they are also water soluble which is fantastic. I might just show you that water soluble nature. We then have, again, newer products, and these are oil pastels. I've only just started to use more of these in the late latter half of the year, but I love adding these as like a last minute thing um, the texture of these it gives especially if you use it on cold pressed paper it really catches a really nice texture or over acrylic paint if it's laid on thickly these are beautiful for that reason and this one is Naples yellow one of my favorite sort of yellows to use is a Naples yellow and then this is green yellow light almost like a, a pastel may green which is lovely and these also do mix nicely with your finger. So next we have Neo Colours, which are a firm favourite. Some of mine have been truly destroyed, but I adore it. Again, you can see the colour themes, very jar inspired, very fresh in terms of colour palette, but I will swatch these now. I believe these are all the aquarelles. 
I do love the Neo Color ones, but I tend to find I use these a lot more because of the creaminess of them. I'm not going to swatch the white, but it is very well used and loved. It has snapped and it's very sad, but I am not going to give up. I will use all of this until the nub is no more. I would show you that these are mixable with water but I think having them like this is far more satisfying and I tend to use them more like this than without the water so this is truer to the way that I use them. I do use the Stabilos a little bit more with water than these because I think I like the saturation of these colours and the creaminess. I'm now going to go through colour pencils and now my tried and trues are my polychromos. I use these even when I was a tattoo artist. These were my go-tos for flash designs before I delved into the world digital art with my iPad and these colours have stood the test of time and I still use even though I've got ones from Karen Dash which are a lot more of a higher quality I guess but the polychromos are fantastic I think the black is still probably my favourite black out of all of the ones that I've used I think it's because I'm very familiar with the, the formula but I'll show you these now I believe some of these colours have been changed in terms of the colour names because flesh was involved. Flesh comes in all different colours, not just beige. So I will show you these as they are named here, but I do believe they have been changed in terms of the colours. I'm going to now go into my Derwents. I've got light fasts and drawings. These are the colours I've used most of this variety. I did have graphic tints for Christmas, but I haven't experimented with them enough to, for them to be a favourite. I'm definitely a fan of them, but I don't feel like I am as familiar with the formulation yet to be able to rate them as highly as, say, these, which I have been using loads recently. First of all, we're going to go through the drawing pencils. These are definitely that of a slightly chalkier consistency not chalky in terms of powdery though they do have a bit of a creaminess to them i love the tones of these while they're considered more like of a neutral tone they're also fantastic for portraits uh, especially undertones to layer underneath or over the top of markers or underneath the other kind of finishing touches Now the light fasts are far more of like a looks variation because of the permanence and their their name suggests the light fastness of them. They are very high quality. We definitely recommend them more for the professional side of artwork than the experimentation. I wonder where my pencil sharpener oh, there it is. These are fabulous for portraits. I did a portrait for my friend for her birthday of her and her grandmother, and I use these tones in particular and this formula because they just perform so beautifully. They are kind of in between the luminance from Karen Dash and the polychromos. They have the blendability of the Karen Dash 
and the slight waxiness of the polychromos, I can rely on them to capture what I want with them. They're very easy to use in that sense. There's no inconsistencies in the formulation. I know what I'm getting with them and that's why I like them. You can really see the smoothness in this shade, just how buttery it is. I adore this one. It's actually the first green that I bought and then went on an experimentation to find a green similar or darker. I've yet to find one that is as beautiful as this one and it's racing green. And one of those where the names really get to me as well. There's a green called Mallard Green and I do love a duck. My mother's favourite animal is a duck and I think that that definitely somewhat convinced me in purchasing that green but again beautiful colour as well very tealy phthalo green inspired but I tend to use this one racing green a lot more. On to the Caran Dash Luminance. These are absolutely exquisite pencils probably my favourite out of all of them but not my favourite in terms of price tag. The blendability of these is absolutely splendid Again, very reliable when I'm doing portraiture. I know what I'm getting with them. The colour range as well is spectacular. I like colours that I can't normally find elsewhere and I tend to grab those ones more from different brands. If I want to try a brand that I haven't tried before, I tend to either grab a unique shade to my collection that I can't find from another brand or a colour that I know I will use, that, that I use a lot of to stop me from having to repurchase the same shades. I have enough of a variation of formulas that I know a different formula won't go amiss and they won't be wasted. Things like Payne's Grey or Portraiture Shades especially are ones I like to experiment with in terms of brands. I do believe, similar to the Polychromos, that some of these have had their names changed due to the word flesh, but maybe not all of them, I can't quite remember but gorgeous shades nonetheless. If I had to choose my favourite colour in the Illuminance range, it would be this one. And again, I've not found one that is comparable in terms of the vibrancy or the formula and the way it performs. I absolutely love this. I believe this is the Anthraquinoid Pink. Anthraquinoid Pink. You can see how the pigment of these are a lot more unique, somewhat vibrant, and that powderiness as well, which does aid very well with the blendability, but can also make a bit of a mess, as you have been warned. I will never not love a Payne's Grey. The versatility, the depth, but especially in this formula, you can get the percentages, so it's the saturation of the, or the intensity of the colour itself. So this is 60%. I have recently bought the 40%. I think it's the shade lighter than this, which work, performs very similarly to the Solway Blue, but in this formula. It's beautiful. I'm now going to swatch my Copic markers because I've been using a lot of those recently and I like layering these with the Copic markers so I thought they'd go quite well with these. I don't actually have anything else after that to swatch so I have, that's quite satisfying that they both fit on all of my paper. And this is the hot pressed paper I just thought I'd say so I can show you that there's hot pressed and cold pressed of the cast art that I mentioned prior. These are the Topic Chows. These are the colours I've found I've used the most in the portraits that I've done recently, but also the ones that I find provide the most versatility in my portraits themselves. I find I can get a lot done with these. They're also great for layering and can provide a variety of different skin tones, undertones and whatnot with what I want to do. Also hair colours, eye colours, etc. So I'll swatch these now. Like I said, they're all the Chow variety, which are slightly more inexpensive, but they have the same colours 
and brush tips as the sketch markers. The sketch markers I do have and they are a lot more pricey but I find that these ones are slightly juicier in the consistency. My sketch markers now, I don't know whether it's just because they are old and well loved but they are slightly drier in consistency. These are a lot wetter which I do find harder to blend with them but I tend to be using these as the colours and the bases of portraits anyway so it's not the end of the world but these are my most favourites of the collection that I've used recently for my portraits this year. Well, I don't know about you, but my soul has been truly cleansed by looking at all of these beautiful, beautiful items. And it's making me very much want to get back into my art supply experimentation. But I'm in the midst of doing quite a lot of clay. But I will reward myself with some art supply playtime when I am finished with these projects. But that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video or like me, please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here and join me on all of my arty endeavours. All of the items I have mentioned today will be linked in the description box below and they will be affiliate links, just thought I'd mention that. So if you do shop through those, then I will earn a small commission, which is a great way to support my channel without costing you any extra. My Etsy shop, Instagram and all of that will also be linked below. So if you do fancy seeing some bits behind the scenes or having a nosy at some items that I am selling that I have made with my own hands, then that would be great. But I'm going to go. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a truly magical rest of your day. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.